Hi, everybody, and welcome to tonight's uh, Spiritual Psychic Show. Please excuse me, I do have a cold and blowing my nose and every other thing, so I apologize, but I promise you some seriously good readings tonight. I will mute whenever I have to blow my nose, <laughs> which unfortunately might be often. So for those of you just joining us, this is the Spiritual Psychic Show, aka Sledgehammer, because I don't hold back, which is why I ask you to submit your questions with an alias so as not to embarrass you. Uh, every week we have a winner. Uh, how do you enter to receive a free reading? You have to like this page, Into Intuition's page, and share this video. It's okay to share the recorded one if you're catching this and it's not live. But you got to share it because after I run all the names and then I send it through a random generator for the numbers and I count who wins, I do check to make sure you have liked this page. If not, uh, go to the next one. But so far, everybody has. And I want to congratulate Elizabeth Evans DiCaprio. Elizabeth, congratulations. You are this week's winner. You just email me at Nora at intuintuition.com and we'll arrange a time to have your free 30-minute reading with me. Now, we give away two books. One is for Andrea Lynn St. Check. If I'm killing it, I apologize. S-A-N-C-K-E-Y. St. Key. Andrea Lynn, you know who you are. There's only so many Andrea Lynn's on my show. <laughs> You won one of the books, honey. So you just message me or email me which one you would like. Go to intuintuition.com. Check out the two books and I will send you an e-version. You can watch it using a Kindle. And you can download Kindle for free. Gloria Bott, you won the other book. I know you were shooting for another reading, but you got the book, honey. And I hope your surgery went well. I happened to catch on Facebook that you went through some major surgery today. So you are in my prayers, as I am sure you are in a lot of uh, the other people who watch and enjoy your comments. So we're going to jump right in. Now, I just got to click a couple buttons because I want to make sure I see the feed. And bingo. All right. So now I get to say hi to everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, hey, my husband's cousin's on. Hello, Ange, uh, Andri Adrian. Duh, I'm telling you, I'm sick, so that's my excuse. Mary Antonio. Antonio won last week, and he's going to be getting his reading shortly. Denise, Rita, Diane, Eric. Eric, I don't recognize you. Welcome aboard. And if I said that last week, sorry, I am sick, so that's my excuse. <laughs> Shauna. Uh, Danita, Michelle, always great to see you. Lisa, Tina, uh, let's see who else. Martha, I love you too. Thank you so much. Aaron, Aaron, I really love the paintings and I'm still waiting for my painting that you promised me. So <laughs> don't think I don't look at the mailbox every day and wonder, did she forget me? Anyway, these have been some, like so many questions this week. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to get to as many as possible. I answered most, well, not most, but I answered a huge quantity of them, hoping to get them out for you guys. So again, thank you for using aliases because some of this might be embarrassing. So Michelle, this is you, sweetie. You said, Nora, should I be concerned about my teenage daughter? She seems depressed and upset, but doesn't go into detail about much. I know a lot has to do with her prom and date to her prom, but I feel like there's something that she isn't telling me. Any thoughts? Michelle, the second I started reading this, I heard the word abortion. Your daughter either recently had one or was involved in assisting a friend in getting one and is quite disturbed about it. I know you're like, not my daughter. When you approach the subject with her, it will eventually come out, but you need to be very gentle. She is really hurting over this. Um, and I was surprised. I mean, I, I mean, it was like, boom, right there. So this is one of those I wouldn't disagree with myself. Sometimes I say I could be wrong, but... 
All right. I know uh, she's just a teenager, but you need to address it with her. It could be a friend who had it done, but she really needs your support. She doesn't need to be made wrong. That is her biggest fear right now. Um, and, you know, uh, what happens with young people, especially women, when we're made wrong for making such a tough decision, often those women go out to be real strong activists as for pro-abortion because that's their way of justifying what they did when they themselves are dealing with a deep depression. Now, this isn't all women. Not all women go through a deep depression. And I'm not saying I'm pro-life or pro-choice here. I'm just saying your daughter needs a real gentle kit gloves. This is not about her prom. Her prom has some stuff to do with it. She's actively sexually active and you need to be talking to that girl and helping her out. So, like I said, sledgehammer baby, we don't hold back. We just let you have it. So let's see what's going on on this screen here. Erin, I haven't been able to get out of the house yet. That's right, baby. I like teasing you. Eric, there has been a shift in energy in a big way over the last two years. Yes, there has. And actually met and dwell with my soulmate. I believe I have met her, have I? Well, who am I to argue? But let's see. You have definitely met, um, I don't call them soulmates, but you have definitely met a person that can, the two of you can make each other happy. The reason is I see a lot of generosity on her end of trying to please and on your end of trying to please. And that's what's going to make it work. The two of you really uh, care so much for the other person that you're constantly in service to each other. And that's beautiful. And that's why it's going to be successful. So God bless. And I'm glad you found her. All right. Let me go down now. Gloria, uh, Gloria, you just got out of surgery, so you're going to catch this on a video, honey. It says, hi, Nora. Can't wait to see you back. Thank you. Uh, what do you see as far as health, career, and love for my daughter, Taylor? Thank you. I enjoy the show. Okay, so this is short and sweet. Gloria, as far as I see, Taylor is healthy. Uh, she will have good opportunities with her career. Love sooner than you think. Stop worrying. That's what they told me loud and clear. Tell her, stop worrying. She's doing her own path. She's doing it her own way. Get out of the way. You're done raising her. That, that, I'm telling you, that's what they're telling me. So I have to go with it. So relax, recover. Your kid's in good hands. She's an adult. She knows what she's doing. Or she's a young adult. But she's fine. I know we worry we're mommies. We can't help it. Let me see who I can grab on the feed. Shauna. So I'm back at square one on the dating scene. I'm getting so close to finding Mr. Right when and where. But isn't it cool, Shauna, you shift it. So those who don't know, who might be a little new to the uh, as the world turns for Shauna's dating, she's made some amazing shifts. The thing with here, listening to spiritual psychics, so coming to us for any kind of guidance, myself or Chris Gaganis, we tell you what the spirits are saying you need to do to alter how things are occurring for you. And man, Shauna took it on and she's meeting several Mr. Wrights, having a lot of fun where she wasn't. And I told you before, honey, it wasn't going to be this guy. It's a, He's a few guys down like I'm seeing two more guys down before it's the positive one, but that can change at any time. That truly can change at any time. Have fun. All right. We're going to keep rocking and rolling, but let me remind you, share people. Share, share, share. That's what keeps me going here. It's your sharing. It's your joining my email, liking this page. That's what makes it worthwhile. And I love being able to communicate with you when the show's not on through emails and the like. So please, you know, like and share and possibly win next week the free reading. All right. This one is Diane. Can you please tell me if anyone is around me and if I will ever have love? Thank you. Okay. So here's a real fine example of what I was talking about with Shauna. The spirits immediately told me, first of all, there is an older woman spirit, not a mother energy and ant energy and she looks like you or you were named after her 
one or the other. Uh, she has a strong connection to you. Now, oh yeah, this is this is really important. When I ask them what's going on that you need to shift in order to allow love in and have a really nice relationship, they said you were too crowded with too many spirits. And I'm like, okay, so I took a look. There are a lot of uh, souls that have not crossed over that are attracted to certain people. They're attracted because you can hear them and you're a light or you can feel them, sense them, and they know that you can and therefore you have the ability to pray and cross them over. You don't realize how much you have. You think you're not sleeping at night because your mind's going a mile a minute or that you have all these things going on. No, you're not sleeping at night because these entities are not leaving you alone. You really need to um, zip up, learn how to protect yourself using prayer and energy medicine and get really grounded, honey, because your light's not going to go out. So you need to be able to control what's going on around you and put a limit. Like Christine and I may we would get bombarded if we kept our if we kept our open sign on all the time. My open sign is shut at certain hours. Those spirits that need help know if they interfere during my close time, I'm not helping them. I'm sending them on their way. You need to set ground rules. This is might sound out there. It might not feel right to you, but pray on it. If you, I don't think you meditate, but if you do meditate on it, actually take up meditation. It will help. Um, you need to get that kind of help. What's going on is men see, see men and women, we see energetically. We don't just see, you know, physical. We don't just see the matter. We don't realize we see the energy, but we do. And what they see is a lot of stuff going on. So they don't want to be bothered. They don't want a woman with a lot of stuff going on. But it's not your stuff. It's these spirits. Once you can control it, once you can get a handle on it, you will be able to make that space where there's not the whirlwind around you and men will feel comfortable approaching you. Now, I don't do this often, but I am offering you at least 15 minutes of counseling on how to handle this, hon, because this is big. Um, all right, a half an hour. <laughs> so you personally email me at Nora at into, into, into intuition.com. And uh, Diane, we're going to work together for at least a half an hour to get you on the right foot. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes commitment. And once you get this under control, the energy will clear and you will be able to attract men much more easily. Of course, they also tell me you're quite attractive and you're very caring. So that's cool. That's beautiful qualities. All right, we're going to jump into the feed and still try to get in as many questions as I can from the forms. Michelle, I think I keep feeling my dog Ellie and Sadie are around me, are they? You know what, Michelle? Uh, I'm sure they are. Uh, Wolf Shantz and Alderaan Griff and, you know, my puppies, my babies, Duke, they're around me. And they're around us, especially if we start thinking of them, just like when we think of human spirits. So today's my dad's birthday. And of course, I, I gave a lot of thought and prayer, sent it to him. And I could feel his presence slightly for a little while. So I knew he was present. They come when we think, when we ask about them. So yeah, believe me, those two beautiful great Danes are with you, honey. And they always will be. And they'll be waiting for you at the pearly gates. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh, this is another like sad one. I think you guys gave me like really heart-wrenching ones this week. But beforehand, let's get to the commercial. The commercial is you got to share the show. Share the show keeps me going. You share the show. You like the page into intuition and you win a chance, you get entered into a chance to win a free reading, a full 30 minute free reading, or runners up get a choice of one of my two books. Both are bestsellers, so they're both worth reading. 
They're on my website, Into Intuition. You can check them out. The next person is Bethany. Bethany, this is depressing too, so hang on, honey. The second I started reading this, as soon as I read My Husband Has, I Heard Deceased. So I'm going to read the rest of it. Has been estranged from his brother for many years, after years of bailing him out of trouble. No one in the extended family has heard from his brother. The last time was six years ago during the mother's when the mother died. After the grave services, his brother walked away without saying goodbye while my husband was speaking with the priest. A few days ago, my husband had a dream that his brother had died. We don't know where his brother's living and we don't have a phone number. My husband sent a text to his niece asking if he was okay, but haven't received a reply. Is his brother okay? And he is okay, but he is deceased. Um, now, it could be his refusal to be found that makes it appear he is deceased. But I mean, the fact that I started reading and immediately heard deceased, I'm going with he's definitely deceased. Uh, let me see. There's a lot of miscommunication with the niece. She does not know how much his brother done. She feels like the family um, didn't care as much. She kind of knows the truth, but doesn't want to face the truth. So it might be nice to try to bring her in and help her out. It's not your responsibility to do that, but it would be a kind thing to do. All righty, let me jump over here. And if I accidentally skip anyone, I apologize. I'm trying to do the best I can. All right. Jennifer, you want to know if there's something attached to your brother? I thought I addressed him last time, Jennifer. I remember doing a reading on him. It's not the kind of attachment that you think. He's not, he, is, he has attachments. They are not demonic. They are just really bad energies that are caused from his age his uh, desire to want freedom and move forward, but can't because of limitations. I'm getting he's only about 18, 19. So um, these, are, these are normal things that happen to young men as well as young women, and you just need to learn to deal with it. It's like that little angel on your shoulder, little devil on your shoulder. When you're at certain ages and you're frustrated, the devil seems to get more of your attention. So you're acting out more. So attachments are more attracted to you. But because they're not really ingrained, there's something easy to move forward. Your brother's going to be fine. You need to stop worrying about him. Just take care of you, honey. He's going to be okay. All right. I'm going on to. I'm running out of time, so give me half a second. I'm not running out of a lot of time, but I want to make sure I get in some of the ones that I know are really super important. Important, And Danette, I think you're one of those that I really, really wanted to talk to. So Danette, is my mom okay? Did she suffer? Now, Danette, I started getting a um, like restriction in my airway. And I couldn't, and even now I'm getting it. I almost feel like they're tubes. So I don't know if your mom was on a breathing tube, but I feel like it was either sudden or an accident. Like you didn't expect her to be this ill so fast and have to go the way she did. Um, there wasn't much time for you guys to digest. This is the end. It was just happening really quickly. She came right to me. She said she never felt a thing. Beautiful angels were on both of her sides. They were shielding any pain and filling her with peace. She had tears running down her face. I just, she was so moved as she spoke. I asked her, how can I be sure you are the mother of Danette? Um, can you show me something so that we are sure and Danette can get confirmation? So this is going to sound crazy, but she showed me a worn out pot, uh, a mat for a hot pot. So a pot holder. 
it's worn out, it's round, it's about this big. And uh, she just showed it to me and she made me feel like she can put out a beautiful table setting. But every day dinners were out of a pot and she would just plop the pot on her round thing that uh, to pot holder. Now, if there is a specific pot holder that she used all the time, it is round um, and really like beat up needs to go then it was your mom coming through. And I hope that it was because the woman who came through was very much at peace and very much wanted her family to know that. All right, let's jump on the feed. Da -da -da -da. Shauna, Sean. Hey, how's it going with your daughter? Is she, is she actively doing the, the uh, little beauty pageant things? I'd love to know. Hope she's doing well with it. Martha. Uh, what you what you see for my daughter Ashley work in love? Okay, that's a big one, honey. You got to submit that one. I like to spend a little time making sure I get a good amount of information like that. Uh, let me see, Lisa. Uh, LMS Lisa, she's definitely shifted. Yes, she has, and she's got a wonderful man now. And again, another person who took the guidance that the spirit sent through myself or Christine. And I mean, it's harsh sometimes. It's like, oh, but you know, it's, it's, you're asking and they're willing to tell you. Um, any questions about other people? It's really a good idea to submit them on a form. Now the form is on the top of this feed. It's also on my website into intuition.com. You go over to contacts, slide right down to Ask a Psychic. You fill out that form. I get it here, and I have time to process them and really get a good answer. Even though the answers are quick when I'm telling you them, there's a lot of thought, meditation, prayer that goes into these. So when you're asking me about your niece or your daughter or something like that, it's best to put them through the form. So you get a really good answer. So Mona, I would like to know if there's a better job for me in the future. I'm not happy with the way my life is going. And right away I heard, of course, but you're afraid to jump. Financial strains hold you. Lack of self-confidence has you. Uh, you. They made it very clear you're very powerful, but you feel so used and beaten down. Um, that you, you lost your power. You lost your knowing of your power. You did not lose your power. You feel like you have no voice where you're at and you don't. You have no control over ethical things. You're uncomfortable. It doesn't matter. You can't control it. You have to go with the flow and it's not something that is nourishing to you and has been eating you up. Um, you fear no one's going to want you, mostly because of age. And, you know, it is hard to switch jobs at a certain age. Um, but there still an, is an escape hatch. They said, emphasize, emphasize, escape hatch, escape hatch. There is an escape hatch. Just take your time, look online, and start asking. Start networking verbally because they said you can look online to get a sense of what's out there and how you have to present yourself, but that's not how it's coming. It's coming by networking, speaking to other people and not being afraid to say, I'm looking, you know, or I'm looking, don't let the boss know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking what's going on. What do you got at your place? Because um, you do still come across as powerful, even though you don't know you do. So look in the mirror, tell yourself, and grab that new job. All right, let's see. Let's grab something here on the feed. And while I'm looking, share this show, guys. <laughs> All right, white noise helps me. Okay. Oh, quiet down the whispers. That's a real good point. Aaron turns on white noise to quiet the whispers. I just announce you bother me. I will not help you. Got it. I will be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow and I'll be glad to help you. Or most of the time I say, meet me in the minute I'm done my meditation and I will use that prayerful energy to send you across. You interrupt me or you bother me during the night. 
you get nothing from me. I send you on your way. They listen. They leave me alone. <laughs> uh, Shauna Sean had back surgery again last Thursday. Left leg is still having major issues. Will it get better? <sighs> okay. Um, it's never going to be 100% better. I'm sorry. They're giving me more like it's going to get, make it to 80%. And then with time, like 95%. So it's not going to be a real big reduction. But it's from the 80 to the 95 that's going to be frustrating. It's going to require a lot of PT and discipline on your part. They're also saying try not to get frustrated because you will regain at least 95%. And since you are not professionally running and things, you should be fine. Um, you're not going to need a walker. You're not going to need a cane, nothing like that. All right, let's see. Um, da -da -da -da. This is Rita. What time is it? Oh, we got four minutes. All right. I said reader, so we have to do reader. Oh, I'm going to talk as fast as I can. Make sure you share people. Okay. <laughs> reader. Hello, Nora. For several years, my 18-year-old son has suffered from depression. He will start to have a turn. Will he start to have a turnaround anytime soon? Uh, he's pretty beaten down. And uh, he's felt unlovable and unworthy since he was a little boy. Something triggered that. Some kind of decision made him feel like he wasn't worthy of being loved. Uh, that could have been a divorce. It could have been a death in a family or could have just been a stupid thing somebody said. But m this was a pretty big break. And he just knows he's not worthy of love. He doesn't consciously know this. It's an unconscious decision. Um, he needs counseling in order to deal with this emotional wound. This isn't something that he can just shake off himself. He needs a little counseling. It doesn't mean years of therapy. It means some counseling. Um, of course, if once he identifies it, he'll be able to move it a lot faster. This is, an, this is a thought, guys that we, you make, you have this thought, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm not worthy. And then it rests in the, your subconscious, in your energy field. And here it is in the energy field now affecting his physicalness by the means of chemical imbalance creating depression. So these kind of conversations are really dangerous and they only get worse. It also doesn't help that um, he likes to use weed. That's hindering him also. The weed is keeping him from really being clear thought and moving forward. You need to just like take that out of his reach until he gets healed. And then as an adult, he can make his own decisions. I asked, I said, this is like really sad. Is there something? And I heard the word landmark. Now, I, I don't know if you know what landmark education is. I make no money on this pitch. But landmark education is a phenomenal phenomenal way to break through from these conversations that you know you have and those that you don't know you have. They're excellent. It's like a long weekend. Um, I used to be one of their volunteers and work with them. They're all over the world. Landmark education. Check them out for him. You cannot put him in. He has to voluntarily go in himself. But you can bring him to an introductory there and see if it's something that would interest him. All right, let me grab somebody else on the feed while we still have a little bit of time. Rita, important keys were misplaced at work. You need to be found. My fellow co-workers is in a rough spot and would appreciate any help. <sighs> okay. Um, I'm getting between a desk and a wall, left-hand side leg. And it's like almost the same color as the desk, the silver leg of the silver key. So that's why there's difficulty seeing it. People have looked there. They just haven't caught it. They haven't seen it because it's kind of jammed back. It fell back. Anybody else who can help read it, please make sure you put that on there. Scan the room. Read it. I talk about psychometry. Map out your office and just start feeling the paper. Just start feeling it where it feels a little bit different, just a little sticky or a little off. That is where the keys might be. And then you go back and you scan again. 
with no thought in your mind except where are the keys. I am feeling for the keys. Where are the keys? I found my lost dog that way. It is a phenomenal technique. I love teaching that technique because it really works great. We are out of time. And I am so sorry because I, I mean, I really, I answered as many as I could, guys. Um, but that's all I can do. So please share the show. Make sure you like Into Intuition. If you enjoyed any of these and you receive value out of them, I'd love you to give me a good review. If I did a poor job for you, please do not give me a review. <laughs> Visit me at Into Intuition and sign up for the newsletter. Love you all. I know I keep saying I'm going to jump on during the week, but if you had any idea what's going on in my life right now, you'd understand why I haven't. I will be doing it. I will be jumping on live here and there. Have a blessed and wonderful week. I love you all. Thanks for trusting me and joining me. Bye now.